Well, hey, good morning. Welcome to Going Deeper. My name is Carrie Hastings, and um, I'm an administrative assistant here at Crossroads. And we're going to go ahead and read the passage for today, which is Philippians 2, starting in verse 1, where Paul says, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and in purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And I just love how in this passage uh, just follows this pattern of scripture where God first tells us who we are and what we have received before he tells us what to do. So going back to verse one, what have we received? We have received encouragement, um, belonging in Christ, comfort from his love, fellowship with the spirit, tenderness and compassion. And um, then he says, well, then now that you have this, now that you know who you are and what you've received, then you can go and do. And um, he says, make my joy complete by being like-minded. And so when I was a kid, I had this, we had this acronym, JOY, um, J-O-Y. J was Jesus first, then others next, and you last. And hey, Kevin. Hey, how are you, Carrie? I'm doing well. Good seeing you. Yes, welcome. Welcome to your I, office. Thanks. I know. I was just <laughs> we said last time we let some people in on the secret that this is uh, that's this where is, we're filming. But yes, yes. I heard you talking about the acronym Joy. I love yes, it. That's great. Yes, yeah. this is like the recipe for humility. It's right. the the secret of um, how we put others first and right. ourselves yeah, it's, last. It's yeah. a beautiful. It's a beautiful little reminder, isn't it? And it's uh, if you don't know it, um, it's just uh, it's a helpful one. Write yeah. it down somewhere. Yes, yes. Keep it on the fridge, whatever, you know. Yes. Yeah. And and so that idea that um, um, I loved how you talked about in the sermon today, that, that tendency that we have that we forget actually who we are mm -hmm. and um, that we have this need to make ourselves significant, like th that we want ourselves to be first. Right. And um, so how does this sense of who we are, this our sense of identity, actually affect our ability to be humble? Yeah. That's um, a great question. Um, you know, I think you look at Jesus, and he's he's a picture of it. You know, he started his ministry, and if anyone knew who he was, it was Jesus. But even Jesus had to receive first mm. before he went out into ministry and, and to, to live life, you know. And so that moment when he was baptized and the Father says, you're my son and you're well loved. You're my beloved son. Mm. And he received that identity, and then that allowed him to go through the hard moments. And um, I, you know, I, I think that that if that's true of Jesus, certainly needs to be true of us too. And um, yeah, it's um, it's there's a there's a weird irony there though somewhere where it's like we're 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 significant, but we miss how significant we are because we try to create it ourselves yes. rather than just simply receive. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. That's it. Huge. I mean, that's the difference really between pride and, and confidence in a way, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. If we knew who we really were and we knew that uh, life wasn't really just about us, then um, it, we would realize that our dependence was on Christ. Then there's just something freeing about that. So freeing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it, you know, it can be exhausting trying to manufacture this and, and you know, try to force it all the time. Um just this kind of humble confidence that comes from knowing who you are and whose you are. Yeah. Yes. And I loved how um, you described the path to humility is not just uh, lowering ourselves, but it's, it's elevating others. And um, that, that idea that the person who really does understand um, what it means to walk in humility actually walks in great confidence. Right. And um, they can stoop low and they can bow low and they can serve, but they can do it with a heart of great confidence in who they are because of that. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I love that. And, um, and I would say that the temptation that we have most often to elevate ourselves and make ourselves the most important are the times where we're struggling, where we're going through a hard time. Sure, and we point. feel like, yeah. don't we get a pass here? Like, don't, isn't this like an excuse where I get to be a little bit self-absorbed where I'm going through a hard time? Right. What, what would you say to that? Well, in a way, I mean, I think, I think there are, there are moments in life where it makes perfect sense to, 
to move through hard moments. Like, you know, if you, if you're grieving the loss of a loved one, certainly there's a moment where you need to walk through that pain or there's something tragic that's happened in your life. You, there may be moments where you need to look in and say, okay, what do I need to learn? Or God, what are you saying to me? But, uh, at the same time, um, I think sometimes people get stuck in those moments and they're unable to move through them because they, they just stay here and they never are able to look up and see people around them. There's a great psychologist, and he said, you know, if you're in, if you're in a real um, kind of emergency tragedy situation, um, you know, and you're, the best way to respond might not just be to go see a psychologist, which you should do if you're struggling in, with depression. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, he said, sometimes the best thing is to go serve someone to go love someone else and get your eyes off your own problems and see people around you. And so I think, I think they're both true, but yeah, I, I I think uh, there's a balance there and oftentimes maybe we miss the balance. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Um, Okay. So last question, I'm going to make a little personal. Okay. Kevin, Um, as a pastor, um, you're on stage a lot. People are looking up to you a lot. Um, How do you maintain um, humility? How do you fight against the enemy of pride that tries to sneak in and what would you say to leaders who are leading a business or leading their homes um um what would you say to them and for a strategy for how you do that yeah i mean um first off i think it's i love the idea that um recent and really kind of in recent history it's like people have discovered the fact that humility is actually a leadership characteristic um stephen covey talks about uh level five leadership and that's the humble leader. And he points to leaders, and they, they've done great research, actually, that shows it's the humble leader that can actually see the value of other people and bring people together and unify people. Um, but it is not an easy thing. I mean, I think I've got people in my life that can say that, like, hey, this is what I'm seeing, and I've invited that from mm-hmm. some people in my life. Uh, so that's one thing. And then it's just the other thing is that, I mean, it's just abundantly clear that anything that happens is because... God's doing it. And I don't know, most, Mm -hmm. most of my favorite moments in ministry and in leadership, I can honestly say it's pretty clear. It wasn't me. It was pretty clear God was working. Um, and so I think just looking back in my years in ministry, that's always been true. And, um, I, I know and believe it's going to be true in the future too. So, yeah, I love that. You can take a compliment from somebody because you know, it's God's gift anyway. It's yeah. all it's all from him. It also makes the criticism a little easier too, maybe, you know? Yep, right? yeah. yep. <laughs> not, not as tied to that. Right, right. Not as tied to yeah. that. Yeah, I love that. Well, um, Kevin, you absolutely model um, humble servant leadership. So we thank you for that leadership. Well, I don't know if I get it right all the time, but um, I've got some great examples on the staff That's and you're right. certainly one of them. So thanks. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. And please do come back for Easter next um, don't Sunday. Don't miss it. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. We are yeah. actually going to dive deeper into this concept of humility as we um, talk about um, Jesus who humbled himself to death on the cross and um, and by humility is where he glorified God and, and glorified himself. So it's a beautiful um, passage and I'm, I think I've never heard it preached on Easter. I'm sure it's been done, but I've not heard it and I'm excited. So, yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing y'all then. Thanks. Have a great week. God bless guys. Take care.